doki. So you're going to kind of want to clear off your desk just a little bit. Um, we will use the comp books, but actually, yeah, put a pencil in it and set it aside. I think we'll be okay for just a minute because we want to play for just a little bit before we do that. All right. So the first thing I need for you to do is take out the two green pieces and then take out your red and white pieces. The rest of them, we can just set those aside for just a second. We're going to start with the green pieces and the red and white pieces. Yeah, and then just scooch the rest of them aside. You don't need to waste time putting them back in the bag. We'll use them eventually. All right, so on the green pieces, tell me something about them. What do you notice? Any ideas? Oh, I was really excited there for just a second, and it's gone. Um, not the green piece specifically. No. Okay. No, you're yeah, you're getting further away. J pardon? Um, not pentose sugar because pent means how many? Five. Means five. So this is a, and how do we know this is a hexose sugar? Okay, so we have like a six-sided figure here. So yes, it is a sugar. Yes, this is a six-sided. It has six carbons. Six carbon better than six-sided, although we are using that six-sided like little figure on there. And it is a sugar. Any idea what kind of sugar it is then? Um, it is... Are, it, it's associated with that, but hold on to that thought. Um, we're going to get to that a little bit later. So not deoxyribose, but we are going to talk about that in a second. It is a six-carbon sugar. It's a six-carbon sugar. Pardon? Does it look really complicated? Well, for you guys that haven't had chemistry, right? Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, this isn't very complicated then. All right, so I have one unit, if you will. What would we call this if I only have one unit, one subunit here? Yes, and then what would be the word part that means single? Hmm? Yeah, we'll say it out loud. I don't care. What did you say? Okay, all right, one part. What if I had a bunch of these? What would I call that whole structure if I have many of them? Which one? For the a lot or the one? Mono mean a lot or one? He can't hear you. You're going to have to say it louder. Okay, so monomer means one. So this is going to be our monomer. So if we have a whole bunch of them together, what is that? Polymer means many. Okay, so we're going to do monomer. So there's two of them, so each of you guys um, in your group can make one of these sugars. But the thing is, is that in the laws of chemistry, if you will, hang on, you're not paying attention. Pay attention. In the laws of the chemistry and in this activity that we're doing, there, there, the thing is, is that we can have no, like, little dangly things. So this is a little dangly end. We can't have that. We have to have it to where it's like complete, if you will. So I can use the pieces and notice that the pieces can be used sometimes in different ways. So you might have to work with it a little bit. But now that I've added, whoops, and I got to do it that way, don't I? Looks like it. See how I don't have an open end or a dangly end? So I can't have an open end like this. I can't have a little dangly end like that. Does that make sense? All right, so each of you take your monomer sugar molecules and go ahead and follow our quote unquote rules for today and we have no open ends, no dangly ends.
All right, we good? Okay. All right, for everybody who's not a little slow, the only thing that you need to have in front of you is your molecule that is complete with no open ends, no dangly ends. Everything else you need to scooch way off to the side because it is not involved anymore. So you have your piece in front of you, all your extra stuff, scooch it off to the side because it is not going to be involved in anything that we're doing um, for the next couple steps. So while we're waiting on Severin, any idea what this single unit monomer sugar might be? Not yet, but hold on to that. <laughs> Hang on to that. No, hold on to that one too. Well, actually, we probably won't talk too much about ribose. But it is a very important sugar. Do you remember any really important sugars that we've talked about recently? ATP is energy. Um, it's not pentose because it's got that would be five, and this is six carbon. Pardon? Pardon? Yes, so this represents a glucose molecule. Yay, why is glucose so important? Because it helps create, which is also called? So glucose is very important because it helps us make ATP. It helps us make energy. So that's one of the reasons why. Now all your extra pieces, scooch them off to the side because they're not involved here. So we just, everybody has a glucose molecule, yes? Yay, congratulations, glucose. And so since this is a one unit single um, component, what do we call it? This is a monomer. All right. Now, you have another glucose. So you and your partner each have a glucose. There are two glucose, glu no, two glucose molecules that you have together. I want you to take those two glucose molecules, bond them together, and make sure, hang on, hang on, and make sure you follow the rules. So we have no open spaces, no dangly spaces, and one rule that I forgot to mention before is law of conservation of matter. So you can't just take stuff and get rid of it and pretend that it was never there. So the stuff that you have in front of you right now, you have a molecule, your partner has a molecule, you have to do something with it to follow the other two rules. You can't just scooch them off to a pile because your pile is not in play right now. Only your two molecules are in play. So you need to bond them together and then you need to follow the rules. No open ends, no dangly ends, law of conservation of matter. Right, right, nothing in that pile, only what you have in front of you right now. All right, go ahead. Oh, no, that's not bonded together. I mean, they're packed together, but bonded together means stuck together to where, you know, just like your red and white are stuck on there. That's not bonded. They're stuck together, but they're not bonded together. So see how these are bonded together? So you've got to bond them together. Oh, I got some people thinking. And I got some people cheating on other groups. Well, you need to follow the rules. You can't throw anything away. No open ends, no dangly ends. Yeah, you can't do that. It's, it, it's still there, and it still has to follow the rules, too. No open ends, no dangly ends. Oh, you were so close. You were. You were close a moment ago. No 
No open ends, no dangling ends. Law of conservation of matter, you can't just get rid of anything. You can't pull anything new in. You have to work with what you've got. You guys were close and now you're getting further away. What happened? Yes, you were. All right. So as the brains are working back there in the back, they're getting there. Yes, I know you cheated. No, no, I heard you say I cheated off them a little. No, they didn't. They had it before you did. <laughs> you at least own it. See, I was just talking to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You were just, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. No, it was actually an accident. <laughs> that's <laughs> science. That's how science is sometimes. Do you not? Do you no, just no, don't I, say I, I it? Okay, okay, okay. Did you all figure out what that was? Don't say it out loud, but just. Okay, okay. How are we doing back there? Do you at least have them bonded together, the green ones? Okay, so then what are you going to do with all the rest of the stuff so that there's no dangly pieces, no open pieces? No, no, you can, law of conservation of matter. You can't just pretend that it doesn't exist. What are you going to do with it? So do that. But they, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't bond to that, though. But I wonder if it would bond to its, each other. No, that's not bonding. Bonding means it has to, this is bonded. Well, okay, so it's not going to bond to your polymer, but would it bind to each other? Okay, so now this has an open end. How can we solve that? Thank you. So these are not going to... See? Don't you love that moment? That aha moment? Don't you just love that? Oh, did you not? I, I saw you had it. You had it a moment ago. I saw Abby holding it. Yes. Okay, so do you know what that is? Can I borrow your molecule? All right, so before I get to this, most of you guys ended up with this little dude right here, yes? Okay, good, good. Do you know, just don't yell it out yet, thumbs up, thumbs down, do you know what this is? Hey, you could like, you know. <laughs> All right, so. How many oxygen atoms do I have? One. How many hydrogen atoms do I have? So what is this? What's the chemical formula? So what is this? Water. Is that what you were thinking? Okay, yeah, no. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, so you each bonded together two glucose molecules and it's basically spit out a water, right? You removed the water to bond them together. Do you remember what that's called? Pardon? Um, makes sense, but that deals with um, uh, DNA, mutations in DNA. And, and actually, I mean, we're not deleting anything, right? Because law of conservation matter means we can't take anything away. Oh, makes sense because we're talking about water, and water does deal with osmosis. And so I know we didn't hit this very hard, 
But whenever water condenses, water gets squeezed out of the atmosphere. So this is a condensation reaction. Okay? Condensation reaction. To bond these two together, I have to take, whoops, sorry, let me just do this. To bond these two together, I have to take one of these off. I have to take these two off. Now I'm bonded together. I'm stuck together. But we have to follow our rules, make that little molecule. So in order to bond those two together, poof, I've got to take that out. Condensation reaction. Um, I can't remember if we mentioned the other term with that. Yes, yes, we did. Okay. So condensation reaction is also known as dehydration synthesis. Do you see how dehydration synthesis also kind of makes sense in, as far as the term? When you, when you dehydrate something, it's losing water. So this loses water to bond them together. Okie doke. All right, so now you have a water molecule, you have two, or you have a water molecule, you have um, a polymer. We've got, actually this is a disaccharide, but let's just keep it simple for just a second. Now what I want you to do is I want you, you need to digest this polymer. So your digestive system needs to break these things down. You cannot add anything from the other pile. You can only use what's in front of you to do that. So go ahead and break them down. Um, so you need, to, you need to digest this molecule. You need to digest this molecule. You need to break it down. Because our bodies can use glucose, but they can't use glycogen. They can't use a polymer. This isn't glycogen, but our bodies can't um, manipulate this. We can only use glucose. So you need to digest this big molecule to make it into two glucose molecules. But still follow all your rules. Is it bonded? Oh, spread them apart. Whatever you say. How are we doing? Can't get rid of anything. No dangly ends, no open ends, law of conservation of matter, nothing's created, nothing destroyed. Are we good back there? You've got them apart, right? Yes. Okay, so now just follow the rules. Yeah, what are you going to do with that? Yeah, it, that's part of what you can use. The stuff that's in your pile, the other pile, is the stuff that you can't use. But yes, you can use that however you want. All right, so glucose is an individual green one. When I bonded two glucose together, you happen to make a disaccharide called maltose. So this is maltose. But our bodies can't process maltose. They can't process this disaccharide. We need glucose. So I need to break this down. What do I need to have in order to break my polymer apart? I need water to break my polymer apart. So when you digest your food, that's why we eat. I mean, if you eat and don't ever drink anything, then that's just wrong. You need to have water. Water is super important for so many reasons. But one of the reasons you need to have water in order to digest things, to break stuff down. Because we need to add water to this in order to break these apart. Make sense with me so far? Okay, so the process of adding water to break it apart. All right, so let's think about this. We've done break apart before in terms of cells. What word did we use when you broke open or broke apart a cell? Pardon? Um, that's when things move across. It could move across a membrane, but I mean, I'm talking about rip and bust a membrane. 
Um, that's um, making more cells. No, hyper means we have a whole lot. Does lysis sound familiar? Oh, yeah, lysis. I love lysis. What's so, lysis and apoptosis, those so, are so much fun. So lysis needs to break apart. If we're adding water, what might the word be if we're adding water to pull it apart? Adhesion sticks, cohesion sticks. And, and we said lysis. You're not even using lysis. <laughs> Hydrolysis, hydrolysis. Hydro, we're adding water. Lysis, we're pulling things apart. So what's the word when I'm taking water out? Wasn't that long ago. Come on now. <laughs> Dehydration synthesis or, or condensation reaction. What's the word when you add water to break it apart? Hydrolysis. Hydrolysis breaks it apart. Condensation reaction or dehydration synthesis bonds it together. Okay? Yes, those are properties of water. So that's a very good thing to be thinking. Okay, so you and your group need to come and continue making the polymer. So I've got the first two molecules. To bring your stuff and make your polymer. All right, so left-hand side, macromolecules, a.k.a. What does a.k.a. mean? Also known as biomolecules. I've seen it um, both terms. AP Bio Notebook, yes. We had Hardy Weinberg stuff, the goldfish stuff before that. We flipped two pages. Macromolecules, I'm on the left-hand side. We're going to add just a few um, common general terms, and then we're going to talk about sugar specifically. All right, so we used the term monomer. Monomer, mono one single small organic molecule. So a monomer is a single unit. We use the word polymer. Polymers are larger molecules created because we're bonding lots of monomers together. So a polymer is a large molecule created by the bonding of monomers. So the reaction that bonds our monomers into polymers, dehydration synthesis, a.k.a. condensation reaction, but a.k.a. means also known as RXN, is my abbreviation for reaction. If that doesn't make sense to you, write something that makes sense. Dehydration synthesis, also known as condensation reaction. So this process is the removal, but remember we're not really removing it. It's, it's just kind of getting kicked out. It doesn't disappear and go away the removal of water in order to bond monomers to form a polymer. H2O means water. Hopefully we're all on the same page with that abbreviation. Dehydration synthesis is also known as condensation reaction taking water out in order to bond monomers together to form a polymer. Synthesis, a.k.a. condensation reaction. A.k.a. means also known as.
way it makes it for me to remember, like for digestion, you eat a meal, you've got to drink water. So in order to break down that polymer, in order to digest that polymer, in order to break the polymer apart, you need to add water. Hydrolysis, 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 when we're adding water to break that bond between them, to break down polymers. Um, add H2O to break a bond, break down polymers. All right. Then I just went ahead and I added, I think that's a nice little diagram that kind of goes through everything um, in a sort of brief way. We're going to look at each one of these in specific, specifically. So I just taped it in, folded it up so it doesn't dangle down underneath. Is that your tape or are you getting it out of the environmental science stuff? Right hand side will be carbohydrates. Dangle, but you can see everything and you're not blocking it. And you could even fold it back down on your printer. Okay, whatever you need. All right, so the little green pieces, those are representing carbohydrates. So we were working with carbohydrates. All right, so hang on, pencils down. Let me just show you what I got first before you add it in there. So I've made a little data table on here that gives us some examples of common carbohydrates. Monosaccharides, disaccharides, polysaccharides. So saccharide indicates a carbohydrate. Saccharide indicates a sugar. Monosaccharide, how many pieces does it have? How many components? One, disaccharide. Two, polysaccharide. Many, okay? So hang on just a second. So some examples. Glucose, fructose, galactose, these are all monosaccharides, so different um, types of monosaccharides. Um, galactose, milk sugar, fructose, fruit sugar, these are six carbon sugars, so it's still going to have that cute little six-sided shape to it. But we did mention five carbon sugars. Ribose, deoxyribose, those are our five carbon sugars. So they're still monosaccharides, but remember there's a difference between them. The five carbon sugars are in DNA and RNA, it's in genetic um, information. Our six carbon sugars are part of macromolecules like, you know, the food that we eat and stuff that we need in order to build, you know, parts and stuff like that. Disaccharides, two sugars bonded together. Maltose is glucose, glucose. Sucrose is glucose and fructose. Lactose, glucose and galactose. Polysaccharides, cellulose, starch, glycogen. Does glycogen sound familiar? Do you remember where we talked about glycogen at? Say that again? Yes, in terms of glucose. 
Uh, yes, what? Yes, it was in terms of diabetes. I mean, it was in that unit, although glycogen is not diabetes. It was our feedback loop that had to do with sugar within that when we were talking about diabetes. So glycogen is a polysaccharide, poly. Many glucose molecules make glycogen. Glycogen is how sugar is stored in animals. Do you remember which um, hormone causes the liver to make glycogen, to store glucose? Do you remember any hormones in, um, involved with our insulin, or with our sugar feedback loop? Yes, very good. So what's the other one when glucose is gone? Glucagon, Glucagon insulin are our two hormones. So which of those two make glycogen? Glucagon tells us that we have um, glucose gone, so are we going to want to store it when glucose is gone in our body? No. So insulin is going to be the one that's going to influence the liver to make glycogen because insulin is going to be produced when you have lots of high blood sugar, when you have lots of um, sugar in your blood. So insulin puts some of that sugar into your cells so your cells can use it for ATP to make energy. Then it's going to tell your liver, hey, we need to store the rest of this so your liver is going to um, bond it together to make glycogen. Starch, cellulose, those are things that are a little bit more plant um, and um, animal in terms of insects and stuff like that, polysaccharides. All right, so go ahead and give yourself a data table to give yourself some examples. CHO, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, that gives me a very good indication if I see a chemical formula with CHO all over the place, good indication that I'm working with a carbohydrate. OS, that, that word ending, it's also a very good indication that I'm working with a carbohydrate. The function, the job of carbohydrates, that it's our energy source. That's the most important job. However, Energy storage and structural materials are also very important for carbohydrates. All right, so I threw this back in here because I know we've been using it, but so carbohydrates aren't ATP. ATP <coughs> is adenosine triphosphate. However, carbohydrates are our source of energy, and energy is ATP in living things. So that's why I put that back in here. So ATP is a form of cellular energy. ATP doesn't end with OS. It is not a type of carbohydrate. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. That's what ATP stands for. It's much more closely related to a nitrogen base than um, to a carbohydrate. But ATP is cellular energy. So whenever we talk about energy, we mean ATP. Whenever we say ATP, we mean energy. What's the name of the bond that takes two glucose and makes a maltose? Takes two. What does lysis mean? What does lysis mean? Lysis means break apart. Condensation reaction or dehydration synthesis. So 
that's the general, I mean, that those terms are used across those bonds everywhere. But it happens to have a special name for carbohydrates. So the bond between your little green um, puzzle pieces over there, for carbohydrate, the special name is a glycosidic linkage. Glucose, glycogen, glycogen, glycolysis. So glycosidic linkage. To get that pencils down for just a second, I'm going to show you what I have on here, and I'm going to have you finish up. So having a general idea of what one of the molecules of, of uh, carbohydrate looks like um, is, is pretty important. I think you'll come across that. I mean, I know you probably will more in chemistry. So hang on before you put anything down. So these both represent um, glucose molecules. The thing is, is that it's a chain in a dry environment, if you will, it forms the little circular structure whenever it's in a wet environment, whenever it's in water. But then if it's glucose in our cells, then it's going to be in the little circular structure. It's going to be um, like this rather than the chain. But knowing both of those um, is important. So remember, our, one of our clues up here was CHO. So whenever I look, all I see is CHO everywhere in each one of these. So this structure right here, this is this carbon, this carbon, this carbon, this carbon, this carbon. It's just when you put it in water, it snaps around and it makes that circular structure. Once you get done with that, um, I took this picture. The back side of this, it shouldn't have been copied on there. That's really not important. The front side where it's talking about the different types of carbohydrates is the thing that's a little bit more important. Um, and so real quick, I'll put this back over here. But the things that I highlighted in each one, so cellulose is a structural material in plants. That's why cellulose is important. Starch is energy storage molecule in plants. Starchy foods, starch, energy storage in plants. Glycogen, energy storage in animals. Glycogen, energy storage in animals. And chitin, when we were talking about functions of carbohydrates, this would be a good example of um, structural uh, materials. So chitin is in the cell walls of fungi exoskeleton of insects. So chitin is like a structural component. It is a carbohydrate that's used for a structural component. All right, and so I just taped this in where it's not gonna cover any of my stuff up and where I can see that it's related to carbohydrates. Here are your two glucose molecules. 